What exactly is the best Christmas movie? Christmas Vacation? Nah. The Grinch and Jim Carrey? No. Elf? <laughs> no. Christmas Story? No, no! No to all of it! Because let me tell you, I have the answer. We wanted to do this last year. I think we even wanted to do it the year before. I want to sit down today and just talk about Jingle All The Way. Because I, I get so excited. I get so giddy talking about Jingle All The Way. The amount of people that say they haven't seen Jingle All The Way, it, it should be a crime. It should be an absolute crime. I mean, the cast is so stacked. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Phil Hartman. You got Jake Lloyd before all the, you know grew up. And you have one of the Belushi brothers, the one that didn't die. He's in it. Oh, and also Sinbad. Um, how, could I, how could I possibly forget about Sinbad? It's such a charismatic cast of characters. And the movie is on levels of Greek tragedy. This movie feels something out of Oedipus Rex. It feels like something out of the Odyssey. It's a Greek tragedy disguised as a Christmas movie. I absolutely love it. And I want to chat with you about it today. So what exactly is Jingle All The Way? Which uh, it might come across as you know, a mid to late 90s schlocky Christmas movie. Easy cash grab for Arnold Schwarzenegger. These things all might be true, but I don't think anybody's truly ready for the roller coaster that's ahead. Especially if you look at the film in a different light. If you look at this thing outside of a Christmas movie, it gets much, much darker. Take away all the whimsical Christmas settings and, you know, the idea of Christmas. This is a tragedy. A Greek tragedy, I'm telling you. So without further ado, let's get into Jingle All the way. You're my number one customer. Which the movie starts off with a fake commercial for Turbo Man facing off against his big enemy Dementor, which has, ooh, oh God, these practical effects, dude. I mean, Buster, no one likes Buster or Booster, whatever the fuck his name is, it doesn't matter. Big furry suit, all the furries coming out, jacking their little dicks off over that. Who doesn't like it? But Dementor has love, love, love his helmet. It has the exposed brain with the like fluid inside of it. So good. And also there's that little moment where there's a close up of his mouth and I can't tell if it's a little schmutz or herpes source. I don't know. You tell me. To me, I like the idea that the actor was like, I, I, I got a little dirty dog in me. And he just, he started howling on set. He was just like, let it roll. Let it roll. Immediately after this, we see that our main character, Jamie, is obsessed with this show. He knows all the words to it. He's watching it in his living room. And yes, just to get out of the way, it's young Anakin Skywalker. Once again, before he grew up and he got to jail and his life was ruined because people were mean to him. Before all that, this is when it was happy times because he liked Turbo Man. You know what I'm talking about. Today's video is sponsored by Scentbird. Scentbird is a monthly subscription service that gives you the power to choose new designer fragrances each month for just $17. The service is great because it lets you try big name brands like Gucci, Prada, and Versace for a fraction of the price before you buy a full bottle, which could cost anywhere from 150 to like 350 dollars. All right? With over 600 fragrances to choose from and tons of unisex options, you'll be sure to find a premium scent that fits your style. Or branch out. The best part of Scentbird is it gives you the freedom to try. How are you supposed to know what you like without testing a few? I don't know about any of this stuff, but I can give it a smell. And if I like it, I'm gonna spray myself with it so I smell good! So let's see what we got this month. We have Ember by Joseph Abbott. We have Eros by Versace. And we have The Perfumer Story by Sequari Wood. I mean, you know, Joseph Abbott's bottle, it feels warm. It feels laid back. Versace's feels smoky and confident. And the perfumer story smells clean and sharp. I thought Ember was probably my favorite out of the line, but God damn it, if I didn't like them all. <laughs> so start your fragrance journey with Scentbird. Use my promo code PAPAMEAT55 to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird, available in the USA and Canada. Thanks for Scentbird for sponsoring, and be sure to check out the links in the description below. Back to the video. Essentially, he has a karate class tonight. He's upset because his dad might not make it. He might not make it to his karate class, which I can understand with. I'm sympathizing with. But let me tell you something. I'm going to interject in moments because a lot of my own personal guilts and gripes with this child is going to seep through, which I know what you're thinking. Papa Meat not liking a child in a movie. That's that's strange. He never, that's uncharacteristic of him. Well, let me tell you, when I was a kid, I would scream at my TV watching this kid, dude. One of the most ungrateful, literal, like evil, spoiled, Spoiled Shakespearean children of all time. I cannot reiterate the amount of Greek tragedy this movie holds in my heart, but I digress. We cut to Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is, I'm assuming he's a CEO of some company. I don't know. He like does something with like bed sheets, I think. He's like, die, you know you. If you don't like the color of the sheets, we can switch it out for free because you're my number one customer. 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 I don't know what kind of, if he's working at like Kohl's corporate or something like that. That would be great if he's like, I found 
founded Kohl's. I came here from Austria and I founded Kohl's and I settled down in Minneapolis. But you get this beautiful montage of him being like, you know, you're my number one customer. And his wife calls him. She's like, Harold, you're gonna miss Jamie's karate tournament class, his belt ceremony. He's like, God, baby, come on, don't be that way. By the way, you're my number one customer. I love that line. I love that part when he calls her and he's like, I, it, baby, I'm sorry. She hangs up on him. The problem with this deal of trying to set up that Jamie is this neglected child doesn't work because Arnold, while he may be, you know, addicted to his work, he tries extremely desperately to, to, to get to his karate class. You know, he's in traffic. He's like, I'm going to make it. And he gets up on the curb and he's breaking laws and he gets a speeding ticket. You know, he has to deal with this dickhead cop who pops up in the movie quite a bit, makes him say the alphabet backwards, which people do that to drunk drivers. How, do sober drivers know how to do that? Does anybody actually know how to say the alphabet backwards? I would only be able to do it if I was able to be like A to Z and then kind of work my way back. It would take me, it would take hours. I'm not the brightest man. But we see the Atlas Stone of this movie, the rock, the central foundation of this film in the bleachers of this auditorium, which is Phil Hartman. And he's recording his fat son. I, I don't know why. I love that his son is fat. It just also helps exemplify how spoiled his son also is. It's, it's very nice. But Phil Hartman is a single dad and he's in the bleacher sitting next to Harold or Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife. And uh, all of the suburban moms around him are kind of like definitely dropping hints. So they're like, you should come to my house and fuck me since you're single now. And he's like, all right, I'll see you. He has that classic Phil Hartman voice, dude. Sure, I've got just the tool for the job. Three, four. Which RIP to the king, dude. RIP to the king. You notice that, it, this is another thing, they come out, they're walking through for their belt ceremony. Jamie has a fucking yellow belt on, dude. Let me tell you, dude, I was barking, I was howling at this screen. To have the audacity to get upset with your parent who is there for you, you know, feeds you, makes sure that you're safe, you're healthy. The audacity to get upset that you didn't make it to a fucking purple belt ceremony? Go fuck yourself. Fuck you, Jamie. Essentially, he's making it through. You see a little moment where Jamie's looking at the door. He's like, my dad's not gonna make it. Arnold whips up, you know, he's got a ticket. He's like, ah, Jamie, I'm coming, come on. Shows up and everyone's already gone. He missed it. And we get a nice moment where he goes back to the house and you can tell he's upset. His wife is definitely mad. He's not getting any pussy tonight. Been up that tree, dude. Been up that tree many times. You're a dog in the hen house. Is that what it is? Is that the expression? You're a dog in the hen house? You're a dog getting ready to be put down by the vet. That's the new expression. You're in the dog house. You're in the dog house. Whatever. You're a 17 year old blind lab getting ready to be put down. That's what's getting ready to happen. Arnold, he's talking to Jamie and Jamie's not giving him the time of fucking day and he walks off. First off, if I would stem, I would daddy of five the shit out of him. No, I'm kidding. I don't want to put that evil out there. Jamie is walking through, and one thing I noticed on this rewatch is it takes an abhorrent amount of time for him to get to his room because the house he's living in is so nice and big. So he's like walking through this fucking labyrinth, and Arnold the whole time is like kind of walking after him. Jamie, come on. Don't be this way, Jamie. Come on, Jamie. And let me tell you again, when I yelled, <laughs> viscerally yelled at the screen, you go into the room and Jamie's, you know, putting on a little fucking pouty show. You go in and Arnold's like, ah, I fucked up. He's walking, he's walking through. <laughs> he's walking through and it's the coolest kid's room imaginable. Toys everywhere. It's very nice. And there's a giant fucking mural of Captain America on the wall. Fuck this kid, dude. He has everything he could ever want. You didn't show up for my karate thing. And the thing too is like, Arnold's not even being facetious. I feel like a lot of movies nowadays would be like, well, you know what? Fine, go up there and cry about it. Ugh. No, he's like being jokey. He does kind of a borderline racist Asian thing and does a kick. I don't know about all that. I don't know if that aged well. <laughs> Oddly enough, it was very charismatic for me. I don't know why. I was like, huh, Arnold, wish you were my dad. I said, hell no, I don't want to touch him. I said, I want to fucking lick him and fucking kiss him. I, I tore that so bitch up like a cobbler salad. Fuck. And I tried to put my hand down the smaller back. She's like, don't be getting out of my under britches. I was like, that's cool, girl. Essentially, Arnold talks to him. He says, you know what? I goofed up. But Jamie says, I know how you can buy back my love. Get me a Turbo Man action doll. Buy back my love, daddy. Don't you love your son? 
Don't you love your little boy? You'd buy me anything, right? Because I'm your son. I hate you. I will hate you forever. Come on, Jimmy. Don't be that way. I'm going to hate you forever, dad, unless you get me this thing. And Arnold basically bends the fucking knee. He had, he thinks he's had a victory here. He goes back and he's like, ah, Liz, you should have seen it. He was so happy when I told him I would buy something. Come on. Which also, let me tell you something too. Goddamn Liz got me a bit half chubbed up watching this fucking thing. She walks by. She's like, did you get the doll? And it does this nice zoom in. And he's like, the doll. And she turns around and her, I mean, her fucking... Popping out. Whoa. Woo! I hate to even bring it up now, but you know, yikes. Had to cross my legs watching it, is all I'm saying. I still appreciate them titties, though. And essentially, there's this great shot where he's like, ah, oh, yeah, God did the test. You know, the crazy lines. It's, it's a turbo man. <laughs> it's, it's really nice. And uh, he does this thing where they lay down, and it's this great shot where he lays his head down, and the light is perfectly fixated on his eyes. And he just kind of does like a nice wide eye thing. That's oh, brilliant. Absolutely love it. So we go to the next morning. You know, it's Christmas Eve now. Jamie's sitting there. He's eating his turbo man cereal. This this movie doesn't age well for American capitalism, really, of just completely brainwashing children. But I gotta say, at the same time, I'm kind of fucking, it worked on me even. I was like, I wouldn't mind a fucking Turbo Man doll. Which I know they definitely sold them. I'm almost positive they actually sold the doll. <laughs> Wish I wish my parents would have got me that. The last gift my dad ever got me, just is just a side note for a little pity story for myself. The last Christmas gift my dad ever got me was 150 bucks sealed? Seems a bit steep to me. Last thing that my dad ever got me, legitimate gift my dad ever got me, I was 12 years old. He got me a two, uh, eight pack of Hanes tube socks and a shotgun. And he took two, and he literally, I was like, the tube socks are open. He's like, yeah, I ran out of socks for work. So I got six pairs. The gun was sweet though. Yeah, whatever. I don't need your guys' fucking sympathy. Howard is like, ah, Liz, I have to go get the D-O-L-L. -L. I'm like, isn't Jamie like 10 years old? Does he not know what a four letter word is? <laughs> Hello? I don't know. But he sneaks out and he goes and that's when we get an amazing spot with Phil Hartman who has a reindeer on a leash. And it's this brilliant puppet that they just put lion sounds with. It's the most like aggressive reindeer of all time. How are you? <laughs> but it's nipping at him. And uh, this is where the movie starts to really take that Greek tragedy feel because this essentially this movie is the complete demasculization of this dad. The world is pointing and laughing at this man and this is basically the start and it starts off with Phil Hartman who once again has that great kind of voice. Borderline 1950s voice. Whoa! Nothing like waiting till the last minute how it's there. Wow waiting for the last minute? Completely demasculates him basically is giving hints that he's going to Fuck his wife. Oh, also, whenever Arnold arrives to the house before he sees Jamie, Phil Hartman is up on the roof putting Christmas lights on the house because he didn't decorate it in time. This is the first key moment that we start to slip into that Greek tragedy of completely trying to destroy and demasculate and basically have this character implode on himself, Arnold. So Phil Hartman just, he's the grim reaper of this movie. I just want to say that. But after a quick little hasty spit spat with Phil Hartman, Arnold is off on his odyssey. Now we get into some Odysseus territory. In a way, by having Arnold have this confrontation with Phil, it's almost like Odysseus talking to Poseidon. It's almost as if he cursed himself right there. You know, he spat in the face of Poseidon, and now Odysseus can never return home. Do you think anybody's going to care about these Greek counterparts? Which leads us to Arnold going to a toy store where he first finds Sinbad. Which, if you don't know Sinbad, if you're not old enough to be, I guess, a millennial. Like, millennials are probably the last people that had interactions with Sinbad. Like, he was in Good Burger back in the day. That was kind of the big one for me, was Good Burger. And this movie. I don't really think I saw anything else. Hmm. Doesn't really matter. But let me tell you, Sinbad, so funny in this movie. Basically has this moment where he's talking about people getting brainwashed and brainwashing their children with uh, consumerist products and stuff. And then I sat there and used some liminal meshes to suck your children's minds out. Whenever I was listening to it, I was like, I agree with everything you're saying. There's not one thing that you said that I would disagree with, but he does crescendo it by uh, taking a random old white woman and fake strangling her in front of everybody. And that part uh, is good. It makes me also, this is one of those things too, where it's like, it's one of those early 90s movies where you appreciate that like yes it's a kids movie but a lot of the jokes adults can get in on and like it might go over a kid's head but everybody is enjoying it in tandem you don't find that anymore the store opens and it's a stampede uh, this is the funny thing is that every time that we go into a store people are throwing themselves into shelves i don't know what it is about this movie but i love that the director is like i want 40 people to be thrown through aisle shelves and just have the store basically collapse it's pretty great but they find out 
out that there's no Turbo Action Man dolls, and we get our another great moment where it's just the universe spitting in Howard's face, which is when he asks for a uh, Turbo Man doll, Chris Parnell gives one of the cringiest, most demasculating <laughs> laps that would put down any man, and the entire store crescendos into pointing and laughing at him as well. You see these guys are looking for a uh, Turbo Man? A Turbo Man doll, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man. Over the top, cartoony, and I love every second of it. But one old woman, which I'm pretty sure is the woman that Sinbad was strangling, has the last one, which Arnold tries to go on a goose chase after, but she speeds off when she sees this giant Austrian man running after her, and his quest continues. Which also, I want to say too, that whenever you get into the toy store for the first time, you get to see all of that very nostalgic, like image comic superhero kind of art, that comic book art style for Turbo Man. It really took me back, made me feel very cozy inside. I feel like that's another thing too, where maybe it's just me who thinks this is the quintessential Christmas movie, but it's tapping into all of these core things for, I don't know. It's just like, it's it's tapping on my brain in a great way. Maybe it does to you too. Cut back to Howard's house and Liz is making cookies with Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman's fat son is saying that he would be Turbo Man over Jamie, which it's like, dude, you would be the fucking fat cat. What the fuck are you talking about? But essentially Phil Hartman once again puts on the Riz, takes off Liz's apron and says, go take a, sh to go take a shower. He knows how to make the cookies. Go treat yourself, Liz. And uh, you see a little bit of his like suave, like nice guy character break when he reaches for a hot cookie and uh, scolds the children immediately. Pipe down in there! <laughs> it's just, it's those little moments that really just, it, it, make, it, it shoots this movie to be one of the, the best. So good. Arnold tries calling his home, trying to get a hold of his wife, Liz, but Ted answers, aka Phil Hartman's character, and we get one of the most iconic scenes in movie history, in my opinion, which is Phil Hartman basically having an oh. orgasm eating these cookies, Arnold getting very frustrated about Ted eating said cookies because it sounds like he's fucking his wife and he does the classic, PUT THAT COOKIE DOWN! Now, but they cook it down. Now, and people just loved it. And uh, essentially, Ted hangs up the phone on Arnold, leaving him speechless, and uh, probably leaving him wondering if he's getting, if he's gonna plow down his wife. I would probably assume so. His son doesn't respect him. I don't think his wife respects him. I think she's getting, she's getting dicked down. But luckily enough, after that whole craziness at the toy store, Sinbad or Mirren, Mirren catches back up with Arnold after that whole fiasco, and they start talking about how they want to be. He wants to be on his team, but Arnold kind of rejects him and there's like a crazed white man who comes running out of a random store being like, they got Turbo Man at the mall! And it's off to the races and they go to the mall and as he starts to drive off, he runs into the cop's bike that pulled him over before and it's just another big step back. And as he gets to the mall, you see Sinbad in front of the line, but really not too far off. I mean, like, he, yeah, he got there a little earlier, but basically they found that the toy store in the mall is doing a bingo ball system where if you get a ball, you there's like a lottery chance. So it's like, even if you get a ball, it's not like you're gonna get a dog. All. But it's absolute fucking chaos. They end up just, which I feel like these employees would be fired. They just throw the balls up in the air and it starts an absolute fucking riot. Once again, people, <laughs> people like throwing themselves over each other. Sinbad does have a Rodney King <laughs> moment, which I was like, holy shit. Rodney King! Rodney King! <laughs> I haven't heard that in like forever. Sinbad has an extra ball. He gets tackled. The bouncy ball starts going all over the mall and we get a nice chase sequence of Arnold running around like an absolute fucking goon through the mall until there's like a tiny, ambiguous, gendered child who I guess is a girl? Yeah, she's... <sighs> Hi, little girl. It's a girl. Maybe in the 90s it was more apparent. I was like, what the fuck is this supposed to be? What am I looking at? Which honestly is kind of a trendsetter in a way if you think about it. I was like, is this a art graduate student in 2023? Maybe. The child puts the dirty ass bouncy ball in <laughs> their mouth. And I like how Arnold does not hesitate at all to grab the child's face to get the ball. Like abs no hesitation whatsoever, which yeah, you have to commit. I mean, that's very nice. But he does get labeled a file and is beaten with purses by all of the other hags. Well, I guess I don't want to say hags if they're trying to beat up a while. All the other moms in the Mall of America fucking playground. Luckily enough from this, the mall Santa says that he does have a Turbo Man doll for sale, which I like how they show this. I, at my, in my older age, I'm able to appreciate it more, but it's just the elf holding the Turbo Man doll <laughs> with today's paper. It's just a Polaroid picture. I don't know why. That really got me this time around. I thought that was like a really funny way to show that, which essentially there's some seedy kind of like scummy. It's the Belushi brother who didn't die. He's a mall Santa 
Atlanta, and Arnold has to give them a drive out of the mall and back into their headquarters where they have like a secret password that opens them up to this like underground ring of like selling, I guess, illegal or cheap products for sale. It's like a black market for mall Santas. Honestly, when I was watching this, I was like, that's like a, such a fun idea for a film. When I was younger, I didn't understand like the underground, like, you know, I guess that it, it never even processed really to me what underground selling of fake goods was. But as an adult, I was like, this is sick. It makes sense. Especially back then when it's like, how many mall Santas are like even like dudes holding the Salvation Army stuff? Like any appearances ever. There's tons. So it makes sense that they would have like this little operation going. But lo and behold, Arnold pays way over asking price. And when he gets the doll, it speaks Spanish. Is there a team for that? Oh, well, that's the uh, multilingual version. I caramba. It also falls apart at breaks, and when he asks for his money back, it causes a fight when he insults them, and he starts fighting all of the Santas. The little ones, which there's a lot of, a lot of little people assault in this movie. I think there's just a lot of little people in this movie that they just, like, throw around and shit. I was kind of like, god damn, dude. Holy shit, is there that many little people stuntmen, or are these fucking people just, like, taking it on the chin? I don't know. But, uh, he fights all of these mall Santas, which when he punches Jim Belushi, he does, like, a pin, like a cartoon pin thing. It's a lot of fun. But also, there's like a Taekwondo Kung Fu Santa. And then I'm pretty sure they literally just got the big show, the WWE wrestler, to just put on a Santa beard and just beat the shit out of Arnold. <laughs> In which the big show punches a another little person who gets sent, you know, I don't know, God, what, a hundred feet at lightning speed? <laughs> Jesus Christ. But there is a cop raid, luckily, that stops this debacle, and Arnold is able to grab one of the toy badges and pretend he's a cop. I love that. I love that little detail. It is kind of like, oh, what a coincidence, but it's fun. You know, it's a, it's a toy. You'd expect some toy cop stuff there. I like it a lot. But, you know, now he goes and he's driving off and he runs out of gas, and he has to walk his happy ass and his car. He pushes it all the way there. I was like, that's a fucking Herculean strength thing. Once again, another Greek trial thing. And uh, there in the coffee shop where he ends up, Sinbad is sitting in there and him and Sinbad talk about how they're terrible fathers, they let down their kids, and they start getting drunk in the middle of the day until they find out over the radio station if you can answer the question, which is, can you name every reindeer in Rudolph's thing or Santa's reindeer? You win a Turbo Man doll. So they start freaking out. They have a big brawl in the photo booth. Arnold fucking hits Sinbad over the face, which I was like, if you would have made this movie R, that would his nose would have been completely split open. I mean, it is, it's fucking brutal. The uh, waiter at the cafe is basically like, oh, by the way, the radio station's two blocks from here. So they start running their happy asses down that way. And as they go inside, they assault the man. Arnold like breaks into the guy's fucking door, which I wondered how he got into the radio station without credentials. He just kind of like walks his way in. He knows where the guy is. It's pretty funny. He breaks into the fucking door and the guy is just like freaking out. And basically also does a scummy thing where he's like, oh, you guys are too late. And also I don't have the doll here. I just have a certificate that says like, oh, we'll get it when it's available. Which luckily Sinbad decides to take over the situation and he grabs one of the boxes that he has in his postman bag and says that it's a bomb. That's a homemade explosive device. A bomb? And he calls it a bomb threat. The cops are called, and Sinbad, I guess, wants to be chaotic and proclaim he's a psycho, giving Arnold enough time to slip out the back, and Sinbad drops the package, and uh, it's actually a bomb. I love that reveal, that he just so happens to have a bomb on him, and he's like, oh shit, that's a bomb. That, well, it was a bomb. That was really a bomb? Just a sick world we're living in, sick people. Pretty good stuff. Once again, would have been extremely bloody mess, but instead we get the like kind of wily coyote explosion mark, burnt mark on the person's face. Not, not bad, pretty good stuff. Arnold goes back, his car is completely fucking vandalized. Someone stripped it and he has to have a tow truck drive him home. And from there, he sees Phil Hartman putting on the star on top of the tree, which let me tell you something, as a fucking man, that's the man's job. That's King of the Castle's job, all right? So for him to do that, he's like, fuck that. I'm gonna steal your fat son's Turbo Man doll because you made it so clear that you had one. So fuck you, I'm gonna go do that. And as he goes, you know, he breaks inside of Phil's house, begins to steal it, but as he's coming out, he kind of has a change of heart because he's a good guy. And he's like, what am I gonna do, steal from a kid? But the lion reindeer comes out of nowhere and starts chasing him through the house. 
You picked the wrong house, fool! Hey, hey! He locks the reindeer in a room, but in the commotion that he had with the reindeer, he shoots this, like, plastic head into the fire, and he starts, you know, basically, he sets a fire on in the house, and the Christmas carolers come up, so Ted, or Phil Hartman, and Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife come out, and they're watching the, <laughs> the Christmas carolers until uh, Arnold, in a panic, punks the fucking thing out of the window and alerts everybody that he started a fire <laughs> in the house. And also, he gets caught with his pants down that he was gonna steal the fucking toy. Once again, it's just, it's no bueno. Now his wife's upset. Ted has every right to absolutely dick down and plow Arnold's wife, and it's 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 looking at, it, pretty extremely grim. Very, very grim. Glim. Grim. Grim? Grim. Grim. He holds the, uh, <laughs> he puts out the fire, and then he holds the head, and he's like, Balthazar. Balthazar. It's pretty good. So after this, Arnold's wife and Phil Hartman are like, you know what, Arnold, you're fucking insane. We're taking the boys to the parade. And Arnold, in desperation of trying to make it up to his kids, goes to the parade as well. And that's where he sees Phil Hartman <laughs> trying to finally move in on Liz. And it is, uh, it's some grade A cringe, I'm not gonna lie. It, it's done very well. He really gasses himself up. Honestly, if I was Liz, it would have worked on me. If I was Arnold's wife, I think I would have. Especially like when he's like, I I'm an extremely desirable bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, I, I love it. You know, Liz, I don't have to tell you. I'm a very eligible bachelor. You can tell this guy has just fucked everything in that neighborhood. Arnold sees it, but he gets interrupted by one of the cops and is diverted a different way. And uh, his wife does end up taking the thermos of, I would assume, is either hot cocoa or eggnog. Have some non-alcoholic eggnog. And bashes it against his fucking face. And Phil Hartman's attempts to get our source nigger's wife pussy is uh, thwarted. Thwarted. For thwarted? Thwarted. Thwarted. What a weird word, dude. <laughs> Thwarted. Who the fuck came up with that? Fuck you. Arnold, trying to hide from the police, goes into this random warehouse where people misidentify him with uh, apparently a replacement stuntman for this position that was the main stuntman or actor got horribly injured and they start putting him into a suit, but they assure Arnold that it's safe this time. When he walks over, we see the dude from Revenge of the Nerds. Not the one that rips the girl, but the one that is the booger. And yeah, there was a rip in Revenge of the Nerds. No one really talks about it. Well, I guess a lot of people talk about it now, but... Did you know that, Nick? Yeah. Oh, I know. You said that was a lot of confidence. But essentially, it ends up being a booster, and whenever we get the reveal that Arnold is dressed up as Turbo Man! He's in the parade, and now he has the opportunity. Everyone's all excited. His son Jamie's there. He's like, oh, I wish my dad was here, blah, blah, blah. Oh, shut the fuck up, Jamie. No, you don't. You just want the doll. Fuck you. Turbo Man, the little statue comes up, and he has to choose a child in the crowd to give the Turbo Man action figure to. He's excited. He's looking for Jamie. Where is Jamie? And he points to him. He does, Jamie! And I think that in the movie, they said, they're like, well, we, we distorted your voice so you'll sound more like him. Jamie! I definitely think in the writer's room, they're just like, how are we gonna make it not abundantly clear that the only Austrian man in town is dressed up as Turbo Man? I guess we'll put a weird effect on his voice. Whatever. And Jamie comes up. Uh, Turbo Man, this is cool. And he's like, oh, Jamie, I'm your... He's getting ready to say that he's his dad. But the Dementor intervenes, and this time, it was Sinbad who stole the uh, costume and assaulted the man who was supposed to play him. And now they have a fight that is resembling the fight from the first part of the episode. It's very fun. They even have the close-up of the mouth. It's a lot of fun. The The... the the ugh, the fist shooting and it punches him and it comes back to his hand. It's a lot of, hey, I like it a lot. Arnold puts the fucking doll in the back of Jamie's backpack and Sinbad's chasing him. Arnold's trying to like get to Jamie and help him, but he's just like flying around the city on this fucking jetpack that he doesn't know how to use. Looking like a bumbling idiot. Sinbad definitely coming across as a ultra villain now. He was once likable, but now he's trying to assault a nine-year-old. Kind of odd, but Jamie, like a fucking idiot, keeps climbing up on this like makeshift tree, like a decoration, and it falls over with Sinbad on it and uh, Sinbad is able to grab the toy, falls into some boxes on the parade, and luckily Arnold is able to maneuver the jetpack or know how to use it in time to save his son as he falls, which, thank God. I mean, it'd be kind of funny if he was like, ah, because it's a big, cheesy, funny sequence of him flying around. Imagine his son just falls to his death there. And he isn't, he isn't able to save him. Once again, if it was a rated R movie and made today, that's like, that, 
I could see that happening. That'd be pretty fun. But no, he saves the day. The cops come, and he's like, I, think, I believe this is yours, young man, and gives him the Turbo Man doll. Arnold has a meet cute with the officer, because he's like, hey, sorry, I fucked your entire life up. <laughs> you know, I'm kawaii. But it's revealed, he finally, his dad reveals that it's his dad. Jamie's like, oh my god! Liz is all wet again. She's like, my pussy was dry for so long, but now I love you. Ted runs off like a pussy. And as Sinbad's being arrested, Jamie gives Sinbad the Turbo Man doll because his dad is Turbo Man, and that's all that matters. What do I need the doll for? I got the real Turbo Man at home! <laughs> Arnold gets to become the hero. It's an amazing, amazing story structure, dude. I love it. A defeated man rises from the ashes to fulfill his destiny. It's the quintessential, it's the quintessential Christmas movie. I love it. To this day, I think I could watch this any time of the year and it'd be, it's still good. If you haven't checked it out, you gotta watch this film. It's absolutely amazing. And I just wanted to take time today to talk about my personal favorite Christmas movie, okay? It used to be Christmas Vacation and I get people like that movie too. I'm an elf hater. I like, I saw so elf is like, I can watch it like once every five years. Otherwise, shit's fucking annoying, dude. The elf fan base, brutal. Elf fan bases are not good. Same with uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. That's a bad fan base too. I know. I know. I hate to be the person to say it. I tell you what was actually not bad either was the Christmas story, the reboot they did, or like the official sequel they did last year. Not a bad one if you're looking for another one. But whatever. Doesn't matter. Jingle all the way. It fucking rules. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I wish he was my dad. I wish Sinbad was my dad too, honestly. After watching this, I wouldn't mind Sinbad being my dad too. I would love for Liz... Oh, yeah. I'm looking for Liz to be my wife. Oh, yeah. But I have a wife already, so stay away, Liz. Be my mom. That sounds like I'm, like, sexually attracted to Liz if she was my mom. Feels weird. Mom. Mommy. Mommy. <laughs> I'm going to be Liz's uh, pay pig. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Happy holidays and uh, happy watching. Jingle all the way. That's all I got. All right, now do something funny. Do something funny? Yeah. Like what? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Thanks to Sinbad for sponsoring the video. Link in the description.